Hey guys, we are live. What is going on out there today? Brent Abel here, webtennis.com. Another episode of Seven Around Seven. I uh, hope you guys are having a great day so far, wherever you are. Uh, we're out here in the California desert, Southern California, Rancho Mirage, the Mission Hills Country Club, deep into the Wilson World Tennis Classic over at Shadow Mountain Resort. And can you spell heat? I mean, it is it is hot, and there are players dropping like flies out of just about every one of the age groups in terms of we're having to retire, right? The heat's just too much. And a lot of it is because, um, you know, a lot of players have not played a tournament in quite a while. And so, um, you know, you can practice all you want, but until you're out there actually playing some matches and just the stress of matches, even if it's, uh, you know, someone you're going to beat a hundred out of a hundred times, there's still enough stress that, that, that mental thing can sap some energy from you. And, and so a lot of this is, Unless you're into tournament match mode where you're quote unquote tournament tough, um, it's it's tricky. So um, a lot of heat. You know, I think last Sunday was 100. Yesterday was high 90s. Uh, I played my first doubles match yesterday in the afternoon around what was the starting time around 245 in the afternoon. It was hot. And of course, the hard courts is a hardcore tournament. Man, it just cranks up the heat index. So anyway. Hydration obviously the, is is the key, but the mental part I think also plays a big a big part of this thing too. Is to just not having to fight it. Obviously, if you're not prepared, if you haven't done the work in terms of the endurance work, which is wherever you are, you could be you know up in Seattle, kind of getting ready for this tournament, and then um, you know you come out here and it's it's ninety plus. That's tough, but still you've got to be doing the endurance work, which for me is a lot of just sweating and gushing and getting into those anaerobic things where lots of sprints and just, you know, as Brad Gilbert says, doing, putting in the hard yards. So um, anyway, that's what's going on over the Shadow Mountain Resort. Um, if you're in the desert and you want to watch some great tennis, um, stop on by today and you're definitely going to see some in, in lots of different age group categories. So guys, let's talk today about shot depth. And, you know, the subtitle here is it doesn't have to land deep. Right. And that's always kind of our thought is that, well, if I'm going to, you know, play balls that are deep um, or if I'm going to have depth, quote unquote depth, the ball's got to land deep. And that's not the case. First of all, what's the purpose of depth? Right. Why do we want the ball to land deep? Well, number one, it's I mean, it's it's obvious. Right. We want to keep our opponent back on the baseline. We don't want to play shots that land short, which gives them an approach shot opportunity um, to where even if we get to their approach shot, you know, we're now being forced to thread the needle up the line, cross court, maybe play a little feather thing underneath them or go for a lob that, you know, again, all of those shot choices require some pretty darn good accuracy. And for sure, you're going to make a few of them, not some, a few, right, in terms of and I think I think I mentioned this the other day, you know, what 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 I got from Mr. Stowe back in the day was we worked on approach shots forever. And he said, the reason we do this is because even if it's a great opponent over there, if you keep forcing them to have to thread the needle, eventually the great players become human. And then he would also say with a sly little smile, it goes. And plus, this is just a hell of a lot more fun to play this way. And he's right. I mean, at least for me. I really, I really kind of connected with that whole thing. Is this this is just a lot more fun to play like this than just kind of patrol the baseline all day long? So um, anyway, that's kind of the purpose, right? Is number one is to keep that player, is to keep the player back. Um, and the other thing too is that it sets up with the skies. You, you know, it, it sets up that 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 potential drop shot opportunity for you, right? Where we've seen in in the picture here, we've got Glenn Busby, and and in from this match, I mean, and I've shown you guys this a lot. He played he played two or three beautiful slice backhands cross court, and uh, and deep enough to where they kept uh, his opponent back there, and then all of a sudden he played the dropper backhand, and most of them, his opponent could not even get to. Right. So, look, here's what I want you to be thinking about with depth. Number one is that 
Yeah, if it lands deep, great. But number two is that, and I've seen this with Larry Turville. Um, I've seen this with Mike Federley. I've seen this with other players where, and I know the picture shows a backhand, and I'll get into that in just a second. But the shot that I really remember the most uh, from, from Larry Turville is his slice back in was like the most accurate thing, accurate in terms of he could put it on a dime over there anywhere. Could be cross court deep, could be cross court short, could be up the line deep, up the line short, whatever it was. I mean, it was just ridiculously accurate. But his forehand was kind of this loosey goosey, and I'm not going to even go with the buggy whip, which is kind of the term for a lot of these forehands. It just, it was a relaxed grip. It wasn't a crazy Western uh, or, or full Western grip. I mean, Larry could hit this thing all day long with a with, with a pure Eastern forehand grip and just relax. He'd get under the ball. He'd roll his forehand up high. And rather than risking having to flirt with that baseline over there, he'd roll it up high, Have and it could land. You know, it'd land past the service line, obviously, but even if, even if it landed halfway between the service line and the baseline, that thing had some nasty bounce to it. Um, and it got up. And and look, if you if you were quick enough to be able to move forward and take it on the rise, okay, that would be one thing. The next thing would be to take it on the rise. You've got to be insanely that I mean, the timing has got to be has got to be incredible. You might pull it off once or twice, but to do it on a steady basis, pretty rough. Uh, and so Larry's forehands, and I've seen this with Mike Federley as well, is, is the ball would land, let's say midway between surf line, uh, the surface line and the baseline, would not crazy top. Again, I talked about the grip. Don't need to be crazy on the grip. You could go a little semi-Western if you want, but if you don't, that's fine. But if you relax it, and then the swing shape doesn't have to be what we, you know, the stuff out there with the windshield wiper or, you know, the buggy whip forehand doesn't have to be that it's got enough top on it and you can get out there and tinker with it and see what it feels like, but it's got enough top that it bounces up and it penetrates through that bounce. It doesn't bounce up and sit. No, it keeps going. And so it keeps that opponent back on their baseline, which is the ultimate goal of quote unquote depth, right? So I don't want you to be thinking that depth means that every ball you hit has got to be within a foot or two of that baseline over there. It doesn't because the ultimate purpose, like I said at the top here, is it's just to keep that opponent back there and never give them an opportunity to be able to approach on a short ball. And if you can do that, especially with that forehand, it does not. And I think the forehand's easier for most of us. Uh, the picture here shows Glenn Busby uh, with, with, with a backhand. And if you've seen this match at all, I've, I've put it up somewhere on, on YouTube, is that, um, you know what? You could actually roll that backhand up as well. Again, without a crazy grip, without massive top. And if it landed halfway between the service line and the baseline, I know with Glenn, it would, it would just keep going. And it would just keep the opponent back there. So anyway, here's what I want you to do. Uh, I want you to get out there. And I want you to tinker with height. Number one, go with height. Don't worry so much about the spin. Just go with a height and, and, and find something that feels comfortable for you where you're not flying the ball out, but it's high enough to where it creates kind of a rainbow shape, right? And again, it's not a push. We're not flattening the thing up there and playing it like a, you know, a defensive lob, even though I have played against a lot of, some players and we'll call them pushers. But it's just kind of a flat lob up there, and if you don't, if you don't take it either on the rise or take it as a volley, um, it it has the same effect because of the trajectory and it bounces and and keeps going. So anyway, find height first, work on that, and then go for the feeling of spin that would um, still have that same height and that would maybe get a little bit more of a penetrating up bounce. Um, you know, forward bounce that is going to keep that that opponent back in the baseline. And then once you do it, you can do that all day long and and force them to go. Well, what am I going to do here? Um, I like to play it as an approach shot sometimes, right? I'll get it to where it's slightly to my backhand side of the court. I'll run around it, and as long as it's not you know coming in too deep to me, then I'll go ahead and I'll roll it back cross court over to that ad side, assuming the guy's righty. 
And, and I kind of take a few steps in assuming that um, the guy's going to back up, which most players do. And they kind of play a high backhand. And all I know is that, Hey, I hope you hit this well, because I would like to be able to have it now as a volley to the open court as you're still recovering. So anyway, um, lots of possibilities with this shot. And again, shot depth, it doesn't have to land deep to, to really serve the purpose that you want, keeping that opponent back and not giving them an opportunity to approach. So guys would love to get your feedback. <clears throat> Excuse me. Love to get your feedback on today's <clears throat> stuff. Um, right down below in the comments area, you can let me know. Uh, could be a comment, could be a remark, could be a question. Love to always read them. And I promise to respond. You can direct message me over at Facebook and or you can shoot me an email, Brent at webtennis.com, B-R-E-N-T at webtennis.com. And uh, I promise to get back to you. Again, my email inbox gets filled up and it may take me a day or two or three to get to you, but I promise I eventually will. Guys, uh, reminder today, the Wilson World Tennis Classic, Shadow Mountain Tennis uh, or the Shadow Mountain Resort in Palm Desert. Um, if you want to come out and watch some great tennis, do it. Singles and doubles. Mixed is going on. Actually, Ann Stanley and I have our first round of mixed doubles today around, I don't know, 345, something like that. All right, guys, um, as always, it's time. You got to get out there. You got to help someone else have a spectacular day. Guys, I'll see you again next time.